happy Sunday art journaling friends. Thanks for joining me here. I'm always excited to have you today. Uh, well, and really every other day. Also, I'm starting with a piece of Canson watercolor paper. And I've got my Daler Rowney Simply Simmons wash brush and some Liquitex gesso. And I'm just giving my page a nice kind of even base. Uh, when it comes to brush strokes and I kind of have picked up recently to like work in a number eight fashion and kind of like the infinity symbol and it really creates some like fun textures and washy areas in my background. But for this I just went for straight strokes. I was just really working on coverage here. Uh, these two chipboard pieces they come from Unwell Studio they, which is the company that I own. And they are chipboard, like a really nice thick craft colored chipboard. I'm using some matte medium here. So it's not fluid matte medium. It's uh, a bit thicker, more like a, a, almost like a gel. I mean, it is a gel, but it's like a gloss gel, except that it dries matte. So which is really great because I almost never want kind of like a shiny surface to work on. I more just like to, pref I prefer and like to work with more matte styled stuff. So only when I'm using mediums and things like I don't really need any glossy mediums underneath my artwork or anything like that. So I'm using matte medium and I'm using it because uh, I'll let this sit here for a few minutes. Now you could heat dry it, but just be aware that when you apply heat to man-made objects, or not objects, but materials, then they tend to bubble and which is what would happen to matte medium. And so rather than heating it thoroughly like all the way through I kind of zapped it with a heat gun for just a couple seconds and then and then I let it sit there and dry so now I'm covering my chipboard in gesso and it's the same Liquitex gesso that I used before and I'm just making sure that it gets into all the little crevices and cracks and crannies that are happening in these spider webs now I have been using chipboard quite a bit lately and well for one I own the company but for two I've been having a lot of fun kind of working it into the background in different ways so I that's what I'm working on here using it as a background piece um, and then I'm gonna do some glazing later and it's really gonna make those spider webs stand out so it's kind of cool uh, oh so I dried that and everything's all good to go and I knew that I was gonna glaze, so I wanted to add some texture. So I started with just the regular Liquitex gesso and I'm using my palette knife to scrape it on. And I know that there's quite a bit of white on white work happening right now, but it will all come out in the wash and you will love it, trust me. So I'm scraping that gesso on there, trying to get some kind of like scratchy rough areas happening where I want the glaze that I know I'm gonna put on soon to kind of settle into. Now, too, if you're a bit more wonky with the way you lay your gesso down in the beginning um, and you kind of purposely miss some areas of gesso, or I mean of paper, the watercolor paper, then when you glaze, the paper would soak up the glaze a lot more in that specific spot, too. But it won't hold up as well to kind of like like scrubbing it, which is what we end up doing with our baby wipes. Um, so after I did that, that scraping with the Liquitex gesso, I decided to get out my Blick gesso, which is quite a bit heavier, and add just even a bit more texture with that. And I know it is hard to see because as I mentioned before, it's the white on white, but you'll notice it once we start really working with things. When we add in our, I was gonna say color, but we don't really add color, we just add black. <laughs> just heating everything dry. And if it's in thin enough layers, you can kind of just just keep your heat gun concentrated on your wet areas. Um, I'm pouring in, it is um, about a third carbon fluid, carbon black from the fluid acrylics by Golden, and then um, two thirds glazing medium. And I have Liquitex glazing medium, but you can use any medium you want. And you'll notice here, right here, so I'm covering a fairly large surface and I could tell that in some areas that paint was starting to dry way before I wanted it to. So I dumped just a bit of glazing medium on the page where those edges were and it kept the paint from drying all the way. And then I didn't get any like stupid harsh edges. I hate the word stupid, but they were are irritating. I hate getting uh, harsh edges when I'm trying to glaze. Um, so here I've got out some baby wipes and I'm just wiping back now. And so this is kind of like um, the song and dance. That's one of my favorite terms when it comes to 
to working in art because it's one of the things I'm trying to practice. Like nothing happens right away. It takes work. Like you have to have layers on layers on layers, or I do. I need layers on layers on layers to get the sort of feel and um, end result that I want. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm switching back and forth between, um, I started with one wipe and it got really dirty and I threw it away and then I went to a second one. And I think in the end, I actually ended up using four or five. But you can see here, as I wipe away the glaze um, mixed with that fluid acrylic, it's staying in the cracks and crevices where my baby wipe can't get to very easily. And if I scrubbed and I got out a paintbrush and stuff, then I could get the glaze out of there also. But that's not what I'm aiming for. I wanted the glaze specifically to kind of darken um, all the shadows and, and the recesses that are happening with the chip, the different layers of chipboard versus paper, and then the kind of scraping of the gesso that I did. And it's all very cool and fun, and I really like it. I've done a lot of glazing lately. I might have to step back from it soon, but uh, for now, I'm sure loving it. You can see how cool those spider webs look up in the corner. And here, so depending on the way um, you're wiping, then your background might start to look like that. So if you wipe straight up and down, you'll have straight up and down um, brush strokes. They look like brush strokes. And then if you work in a circle, which is how I work, then you'll have circly ones. So instead, I just did some pouncing, and it ended up looking a bit more marbly. Here, I tried to do a stencil, and it didn't work, so that's all right. Um, my, my acrylic had already dried. Now I have uh, just a clean piece of paper out so that we're not um, losing our concentration with all the stuff that's going on around the page. This is one of the, my favorite Viva Las Vegas stamp stamps that I've designed, and it's called the Waybill Invoice, and it's very cool. It's got some numbers and some lines and some text and lots of really fun stuff on it. So um, I am stamping it. Look how cool that is, right? And it's so fine, the detail in it. It's really nice. I'm just using some archival ink and stamping that, getting some different textures and things happening in the background. I know a lot of times I have um, like not a hard time filling a page, but I have a lot of open space, a lot of white space, and that is important to me. Um, and so when I'm doing these types of things, I think sometimes I'm trying to fill a void, even though I, there's not necessarily one there, if that makes sense. So that's what I was doing with the stamps, kind of pulling in some texture and putting some more elements in the background. And I probably could have kept going uh, like over and over, and I could have really filled the background with different things, but that's all right. Uh, I did use a mesh texture stamp and, and all of the supplies are below um, either in the supply list or in the description box in the supply list. So definitely check those out if you're looking for specifics. Um, this stamp, it's a Banksy inspired stamp from Viva Las Vegas Stamps. It's a girl in a paper boat and her boat is being flown with a flock by a flock of birds. And so it's very cool and I love it. And uh, when I was last class um, in the physical class, then I had Debbie Johnson, one of my regulars, she asked if we could do something that was Halloween themed. And so today when I started, I got out the spider webs and then I was kind of figuring, trying to figure out how to make it more Halloween themes. And I thought that this girl with her, uh, <laughs> with her paper boat and her bewitched flock of birds seemed very witchy to me. So that's what we went with. And I, you, you know, you could always keep going to like this, this is almost about the end for me for this page. And I don't know, I might journal across it with a graphite pencil or something like that. But, but you could keep stamping and you could add tons of things. You could add some texture and some fiber and some fabric and, and whatever you like. But I, I'm really, uh, really crushing on this page here. I just love the, almost the, the kind of simple texture and background that it has. And then that girl is really the center of attention. Um, because I stamped on the watercolor paper, some of the stamp didn't come through perfectly. And I had already had an idea anyways that I was going to stamp also on some cardstock. And then I fussy cut the cardstock. I didn't make you sit through that because it takes a while. But I fussy cut the little birdhouse that's at the end of her fishing pole. And then I fussy cut the boat and the girl. Then I glued those down with the same matte medium that I glued the chipboard down before. And now I'm going back with some of that carbon fiber, carbon fiber, oh my goodness, sorry, carbon black fluid acrylic paint. And I'm just darkening in those birds where I had stamped them and they got kind of wishy-washy in the background. 
And then last but not least here, I am going to get out my Stabilo and I'm gonna kind of scrape it and color along just the edges. And I was um, really enjoying Whoops, sorry about that. So uh, I was really enjoying that black that was happening along the edges and I wanted to um, kind of add more to that. So I wanted another layer. So I got out my Stabilo and scraped it along the edges or colored along the edges. And then I'm just using a medium round brush and some water, whatever water you have laying around. And uh, like I don't clean my water after every time I clean a brush. So it's a little bit dirty water, but it doesn't matter because I'm working on a gray piece. And uh, I just use the water to activate that Stabilo and it created a really nice frame, which is cool because sometimes that uh, finishes off your project just perfectly like this. So thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you again in a week. Also subscribe. Um, a card will pop up here in just a moment. You can click subscribe there. Check out my other art journaling videos and uh, things like that. Here's that card I was talking about. You can go ahead and subscribe. I have some really fun things coming up in the future. Um, I've been working on a mixed media workshop for Christmas that some girls are joining me for and some other really fun things. So I look forward to seeing you in the future. Thanks so much for being here. Bye.